Hey everyone, it's Mark Zonder and Ray Alder, and we're here on the Sonic, Sonic Perspectives. Perspectives. <laughs> nice and clumsy, I love it. So, uh, like, before we get started in earnest, um, besides Ray, you and I have a mutual friend. Does the name Alex Arellano d- uh, ring a bell to you? Uh, does he happen to be in Texas right at the moment? Uh, I, as far as I know, he still lives here in town. Uh, does he happen to play in a band or used to play in a band called Power of Omens? Yes, sir. Don't know him at all. Oh. <laughs> uh, great guy. I don't know if you've ever talked to him and stuff, but back in the, I mean, about, like, him and I and whatever, but. Back in the day, man, he hooked me up at when he was working at Denon, you know, the electronic company. Oh, yeah. Uh, when he was in L.A. or, you know, in the L.A. area, um, you know, Denon's like really high end. Mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, man, that dude. He told me there was like stuff for some reason, like they were just going to like go roll it over with a steamroller outside, like extra stock or B stock or stuff. I mean, I still have some of it. You know, really? like power, power amps and stuff. And mm-hmm. well, back then cassette decks, but no one uses yeah. cassette decks anymore. But no, super, super great guy. I yeah. mean, probably one of those few guys along with Philip Bino that I'd leave my car keys, my kids, you know, my checkbook with kind of, deal. <laughs> you know, he, he's that, that solid and that, um, you know, straight up. Uh, do you see him at all or you just talk to him or not really uh, I think the last time that I actually saw him was when you guys did that parallel show in San Antonio oh that was a long time ago yeah. <laughs> I mean I mean yeah no he he's a great guy um, I don't know what he's doing these days playing wise um, he he posted on social media that he's about to start a new project um, but I haven't heard any recorded output from him since that second Power of Omens album yeah. What does he have, like 17 kids and 14 grandkids or something like that? I stopped keeping track, and I'm going to assume that's why he kind of dropped out, because like I haven't seen him out and about since, geez, since right around the time they were playing the uh, playing out for that first Power of Omens album. Uh, like, we used to see each other quite a bit. But, um, but yeah, uh, like, I, I stand 100% behind what you say. He's a, he's a really good dude. I know, absolutely. And I know what he's, what he's talking about or what the deal is um it it didn't really come out in detail but i would say about 85 percent what drove me leaving fate's warning was the fact that i was getting married and then like a few years later we had twins oh and i thought the last thing to be is you know on the road uh unless you're out with rush or deep purple or something like that (laughs) and you can kind of make it work but you know the kind of stuff we're doing to be out on the road it it just it it was it didn't make sense to me Mm -hmm. you know it it just it, it wouldn't be fair to me wouldn't yeah. be fair to the kids, wouldn't be fair to my wife, probably wouldn't be fair to the band. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, and I, and I came to Jim and Ray and said, hey, you know, that was, you know, when, the, you know, we just got done with uh, Pleasant Shade of Grey and stuff uh, before we recorded the next one. Mm-hmm. I said, hey, you know, this, this is kind of where I'm at. I'd love to continue doing the recording. We can work something out. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not, I know I'm not a member. I'm not a partner. I, I understand that that's cool. I, and I basically, I would have done it for free because I just enjoy that working process with those guys. It was always, it was, it was stunning. You know, it was always super enjoyable and the result was always kind of mind blowing, you know, and, but Jim wanted somebody that was going to do the touring and play in the band and and I respect it and that's cool. Mm -hmm. And and everything's good and it's fine. There's no like, you know, running out the door with the merchandise cart or, you know, there's, (laughs) there's, you know, there's no, you know, that's why it wasn't that big of a deal when I just called Ray mm-hmm. you know, for this. Um, it wasn't like, oh, dude, I'm really sorry about uh, banging your girlfriend or what. You know, what I mean, it was, <laughs> it was like, you know, they, you know, he, you hear all those drama stories of like what goes on behind the band. There was nothing going on mm-hmm. you know, behind the band. It was just a really simple decision. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I owned a bunch of studios. I had different things going, you know, but I was doing all that when I was single. But when you get married and you know, you're going to have kids. It's, it's kind of tough to keep doing that. So that's kind mm-hmm. of where that one kind of lied, you know, mm-hmm. but, uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize that that's, uh, you know, that that was the reason that you had left. Um, congratulations. Oh, <laughs> I know it's well, been a few years, but congratulations on that. <laughs> well, that, they'll be 16 next month, though. Wow. And, and that's part of the whole thing of like, OK, you know, I figured a little while ago, OK, they're old enough now. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, let's get back to this, you mm -hmm. know. So let's, you know, it's it's I can do it with a clear conscience and not get stretched and pulled. And you can't do that. It just doesn't work. Hold on, Ray's here. Let okay. me let him in. Ray, we've been talking about you this entire time. Awesome, good. Um, can you hear me? You see me? All that good stuff or what? We can't definitely see hear you. you. Definitely hear you. Oh, I'm here. Yeah. And there he is. It was weird. I don't know what the hell that was. Uh, I I signed in at nine twenty eight or something. And it said waiting to let me in, and so I walked away. Because <laughs> are you just now night. getting out of bed? It's nine thirty at night. Oh shit! Writing all day, man. I don't know my time zones very well. Forgive me. <laughs> Where are you, San Antonio? Yes, sir. So you're seven hours. Bye. Yeah, it is I mean, two thirty five over here, and it is sweltering. Fuck, it is 106 today. We don't have air conditioning. Oh, God. That's 95 in the house with all the windows closed. So. Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah, it's like 108 over here, but like I have air conditioning and I've also got four fans in my room. Yeah, Bobby was telling us texting with Bobby earlier and my mother as well. It's fucking nightmare. Yeah. The world's dying. It's crazy. Well, it's 82 here, so sorry. I know. Shut up, Mark. <laughs> I miss I miss LA, man. Can you see Mark? Can you see yeah. the Yeah, I can see both you guys. Oh no, awesome. Can you awesome. see it? Oh, you got it loaded. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, cool. yeah. What Ray's talking about back there is when the record was done, I sent him that for the machine gunner. Okay. And it's scotch, it's not Kool-Aid. Oh, oh, let me see, Ray. It's a scotch decanter. Uh, <laughs> you just drink out of the end of it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> right, yeah, right. I've seen that around. <laughs> Fucking Tony Montana, man. <laughs> it's real. Yeah. It's not yeah. forced. Well, cool. So Mark was just telling me about uh, about uh, how when he left Fates, uh, that everything was still cool. There was no drama. There was no bullshit. You guys kept in touch um but but we fast forward all these years later and all of a sudden you're working together again what precipitated this uh, mark i think i heard that this whole a through z thing started with you yeah it's um you know like i said when the kids were getting older it was like time to get back to band business business and kind of doing what i really love to do and the touring and the interviews and the videos and the whole thing i mean recording for everybody else is cool you know, and it pays the bills, but it gets a bit much after a while. Yeah, it's better than digging a ditch. But so when I was putting it together, uh, you know, starting with a lot of the drum recording stuff that I do, because it's easier to take, you know, a kind of a wacky beat and have someone write to that than me take it and shove it into someone else's song. And when we came down to it, we put the music together and, you know, the whole time we were looking for a singer and I contacted all kinds of people, big, small, named, not no named. And, you know, I was... <laughs> I was striking out like nobody's business. It, it was it was actually very depressing. <laughs> really? And horrible. So it is nowadays, right? It's oh, my weird. God. I mean, explain this to me. Okay, <laughs> man. Here's the song. And it was trial by fire. Here's the song. I want big hook, car commercial, beer commercial, Cobra Kai. I want a hook. It's got to <laughs> be a hook. Please mm -hmm. give me a hook. Guys would send shit back that I swear to God were like, guy singing a really low voice and he's getting like he's doing like the 12 minute epic uh progressive song with all these different voices in trial by fire and i just i didn't know what to say mm -hmm. and no it was horrible it was horrible wow it was brutal yeah and so mark mark gave me a call and he said the the, the magic words business opportunity <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, i was like well yeah it's, it's, you know i didn't i really i didn't know what it was about i had no idea I, you know, like, I, you know, I wanted to work with Mark and that would be cool. But I was, I was a bit apprehensive because I had no idea what the music was like. Um, I, I didn't, I don't agree. I didn't say yes right off the bat, Mark. Did I? I was like, uh, let me kind of check it out. And yeah, not awesome. that I'm super busy, but you know, like, uh, and, um, and I dug the music. I think I, 
the, those guys, Viv and, and Jupe wrote some really cool stuff, man. And I was in, you know, again, you know, going back, being able to do something totally different, you know, yeah, it's rock, but it's like using like your seventies influences, eighties, nineties. It, for example, like it's something that, you know, there's a, everyone knows this or has had the same thing happen. You hear a song so much, you don't even like the band, but you know, every freaking word. You know, mm-hmm. it happens. It's the radio. People remember, remember we used to listen to the car radio, <clears throat> and um, so I, you know, either way, that's like entrenched. It's it's in my head that kind of melody and that style. So it, it went well, I think, with the music. It was, I wouldn't say it was the easiest thing in the world, but it wasn't as hard for me as to write something like you know, like a Fates song or something. So um, it, it all kind of came naturally. I, it, it makes sense that you would get involved with this. I mean, not not, not just considering y'all's history together and fates, but like, you know, even going back to No Exit, you were writing really, really great hooks over some pretty complex material. So, so Mark, I'm kind of wondering why you didn't think to call Ray before you went through that whole ordeal. Yeah. Well, because you might, not, you might not have taken my call. The real truth of the matter is, <laughs> you know, the, the real truth of the matter is, What's the first some? What's the first thing someone's gonna say? Oh man, it's gonna be face born. Yeah. Oh my God. You know, here here's Mark. You know, I'm surprised he didn't call Bones. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, hey, hey Ray, you got Frank's number? You know what I mean? It was like, okay, let me see what I can do. It was such an open palette mm-hmm. that I didn't know what it could be. And then it's it just so got down. Funny. To- it's so funny, Mark. I did didn't even cross my mind that 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 subject of like, oh, what are people gonna? I really didn't. I was just you know working with a friend Uh, it's so funny i'm I'm glad you say that because (laughs) on my end you know outside looking in as they say um (laughs) what fate's warning is doing is none of my business i'm not involved i don't know uh am i stepping on feet am i gonna insult somebody you know you know i wasn't quite sure and it really got down to the point where after i got one of those uh goofy uh, uh, you know, turn in submissions for, you know, vocals and stuff. I just said, you know, I don't know if we can swear on this, but I basically said, fuck it. I'm mm-hmm. just going to call Ray. The worst thing he's going to do is not pick up the call or tell me hell no. Mm-hmm. But that's where I'm <laughs> sitting right now. I'm sitting hell no right now. <laughs> so I just called him. And the thing that two things that came, the reason I called him was, uh, and, and it's funny, it's, it's, it's because the reason I called Ray and maybe not other singers that, you know, that I had contact to, Number one, I knew Ray from back then. We talked. He was totally into what we were doing as far as listening to the music in the past. Totally into it. So I knew that for a fact. And number two, which was the most important thing compared to a lot of other thing, singers, even back then, Ray sings in the pocket. You know, Ray's not, ooh, he's in the pocket, even if it's a five pocket, you know, even if it's seven or nine or whatever, it's in the pocket. And I knew this music he wouldn't get it and go, man, I don't, I don't get it. What, what, what are you oh, doing? I dude, knew all, I, all I heard was four, 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 four. That's all it is. Give me more. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, okay, this is a fucking, this is a, this is a circus ride. This is great. No, it was, <laughs> it's, it's, it was, uh, yeah, it was fun. Thanks for calling. Cheers. Oh, no, I, I would have called earlier. Trust me. But like I said, I was kind of going, yeah. No, yeah. but I knew the material wasn't face warning material. That's the thing, you know. No, you know, it, it definitely wasn't. I'm not, and, and honestly, we didn't say, "Hey, let's not do face warning." But it's more like, "Let's do this," mm-hmm. you know. But I knew with the guys that were going to be in the band, it wasn't going to be ACDC. You know, it was there was going to be stuff happening. Yeah. You know? but when we wrote the music, we sat down and you know, it's like, no man, that's way too long. Make that four bars, okay? You know, it's got to come back in because it's the verse and it's the chorus. Let's, no, we're not going off on some tangents. You know, it was it was it was a lot of pop, uh, like a pop mentality to it. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, there was on my end, there was a lot of editing. I, I when I would get the song, it seemed like. Like some parts would repeat. Maybe once some would, would repeat three times and like maybe there was a part that I, I felt like didn't really need to be there, like, you know, um, yeah, I kind of get this a lot when musicians obviously write a song. Um, maybe they're not thinking about the vocal. Maybe they're not thinking that far ahead. You know, they're into what they're writing. And so when I would get the music, 
it was a little bit all over the place, you know, and I'm trying to find a map to where to go through. Usually when I get a song, I listen and I'll put markers like verse one, verse two, bridge, B verse, I'll, you know, and a lot of that in the beginning was like, okay, this kind of doesn't make sense. So I would, I felt bad, but I would always call Jupe or Viv or Mark and say, I have an idea for an edit, cut this part, you know, add this part, double this part. And uh, I didn't want to offend anybody, especially the songwriters, of course, because it was their baby. Mm -hmm. But everyone, you know, worked so well together that way. You know, everyone's like, of course, you know, give it a shot. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Um, so that was cool, you know, um, basically being able to take this thing and make it into this thing um, and have everybody on board. Um, I don't think ever once, right, Mark, was there a... Was there like, um, like, no, oh, I don't think this is going to work. Let's start over. It well, like, yeah, when you told me to take those fills out of Stranded. <laughs> oh, that was, yeah, but that part was rad. I didn't sleep for two days. I, I was just, I worked on it for a month and you said, Nick, no. The, the interesting thing that I don't know if Ray probably doesn't know this because he wasn't on this side when we were working on the music. But when we were putting that together, we were just kind of going, okay, whoever the singer would be at the time it's going to be up to them to do exactly what you did because we didn't know. And the funny part of it is, and I think this is the true magic of this record. When we sat down and put stuff together, we kind of went, okay, here's the chorus. Here's the verse, blah, blah, blah. Here's the musical part. Two things. Ray sang verses where we thought choruses would have, would have gone. They don't have to go, but we, they should have gone. And then yeah. he also sang over quote musical parts that made them vocal parts, which is awesome. Which is but it worked for me. To me, that kind of made sense, you know. And I remember getting an email, I guess it was from Viv or some one of you guys and saying, like, um, the like, yeah, like, oh, that's that's I thought that would be the verse, but but you made it the chorus, like well, it made sense to me. And the end it worked out, I guess. But yeah, it just you know, I don't know. Because yeah, I was never given a map. You guys never you just gave me the music. That you was never gave me a map, and I was yeah. like, all right, well, I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna follow my instincts. I guess, can, can you guys give me a specific example of where that happened? Which part? Singing the wrong parts in the different places? <laughs> yes, that. Um, yeah, all over the place. I'll turn the light off here. I mean, from from where, where I'm sitting, trial by fire. Okay. I thought that heavy intro in the verse where the drums are kind of like all over the place. Uh -huh. I thought that would have been a chorus and I would have thought the release part, that's kind of the more groovy part would have been a verse. No, I mean, absolutely. Uh, at the water's uh, edge. Yeah, that was a weird one. But that came out so brilliant. And what's so funny about this, as much as we go back to beer commercial, car commercial, Cobra Kai, that song, which is kind of kind of proggy or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. you're, you're into, you know, you're into the the chorus within like 13 seconds. Yeah, it's it's like it's brilliant. I and it, and it believe me, it happened by accident. Because I would have never thought, that. like I said, when we were putting the music together, we were just kind of thinking of our own head. Okay, the softer mm -hmm. parts, kind of the verse, the heavier part. But that, that again, it goes back. That's what I think the brilliance of this is. And again, it just really proves out to me that a group is always stronger than an individual because an individual is going to have one kind of thought. You know, the other thing, too, is that the guys in this band come from so many different places. Mm -hmm. I honestly think I could probably be Jupe and um, Viv's dad. But besides that, um, this is the different influences. So we're not coming from the same place. And that's what, you know, creates that same idea of having something special that sounds unique. Yeah, I, I'm not familiar at all with Jube and Phil's work. Uh, like, did you know those guys already? Are you More. talking, uh, you said Phil? Yeah, and, uh, and Jube, like, I, I have no reference point for these two. Uh, Philip Bino is, you know, he plays with Vi. He's been with Vi forever. Oh, shit. Um, he's been at, he's, see him next Monday, by the way. Yeah. yeah. He'll hook you up. You'll have a good time. Yeah. I literally just texted him yeah. 20 minutes ago. Um, he, <clears throat> he actually was on the tonight show. Really? Uh, not, not as a guest. I mean, in the band. Wow. Um, he played in a band called ring of fire with Mark Bowles and Tony McAlpine. Philip Phillips, like, you know, I, I don't, yeah, no, he, he's, he's the guy. Um, I did uh, a lot of the warlord stuff with him. I met him when uh, Slaver was being put together. Truth be told, 
my buddy says, Hey, I played with this guy. Check him out. I go to his website and there's this dude playing a cello. And I read down the list of his accomplishments. And I literally said out loud, there's no way in hell this guy's playing with us. No way. There's just no way. Mm -hmm. And he winds up to be like a really good friend of mine. And uh, he's great. Jupe has done a lot of stuff. The way we got to Jupe, it, it originally happened. I called Matt Guillory first. The keyboard okay. Player. okay. He, told, he told me he was too busy to start a project, which meant I didn't have enough money for him. So he turned me on to Viv. <laughs> uh-huh. And then we just started going and he had to remind me how when he was in high school, he was listening to my records, which like dated me, but that's cool. Uh, and then it just, then it started going from there. And the thing that's cool about Viv is he's a, like a total composer. He's not a keyboard player per se, he's a composer. And when we were working on stuff, he had guitar sounds. So he put the guitar in. So we get a really good idea of what was happening. Mm -hmm. And then he had worked with Jupe for 20 years or so on various projects. So he just brought him in naturally. And that's how it, it, it happened really quick. There's no auditions. It was again kind of like right. Hey, Chup, here's a song. You know, put some guitar on it. What do you think? You know, where where do you hear stuff? You know, yeah. and that's where it went. Brilliant guys, brilliant players, man. Really, just great songwriters. I mean, I don't know where they came up with this stuff, but and and Jupe's Jupe's leads on the on the album still blow me away, man. It's just it's just tasty, not yeah. over the top, not shredding, just. I, it's musical. I, I, I like his leads. They have melody and, and they make sense and they actually add something to the song. It's not just filling up a part. Like, I think I, I'm really impressed with his, with his playing. Really impressed. I think the cool stuff that he does is in between the vocal lines. Yeah, the little, the little the question and answer kind of thing. Yeah, I like this. Very, stuff. very I was reminiscent. a little apprehensive at first. I got to say, I was like, well, I don't really? know. It's because of the levels and everything, but once ah. it's right it's it makes sense yeah 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 it, it really creates a very unique sound as compared to just having you know whether the guitar or keyboard kind of just hang there it really no, is uh, it's right it's simple lines into <laughs> i would hate to be a cover band having to play any of the stuff as much as it might seem kind of simple mm -hmm. when you start getting into that keyboard and guitar thing going on and even some of the bass playing you know no thanks it's gonna it's gonna get really complicated you know, yeah, but I, I think that's one of the things that really sticks out about this record. I mean, like, there is a lot, there's not, there's, everybody in this band is so accomplished in their own right, and they have the ability to just go off and wail endlessly, but they choose not to do that. They would rather focus on the song itself and serve its purpose, and, uh, and that's something that I really appreciate, especially since, like, like you guys are drawing from like a lot of AOR type stuff, 80s beer commercial, that all that stuff. And and like truth be told, that's just not something that I've ever really been into. But the way that you guys have brought it out, I really enjoy this. Like, it, like I've been listening to this album like for two weeks Gross, non stop. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> oh, you have the whole thing already? Yeah, yeah. I, I've had it for about two weeks. Uh, and uh yeah, man, it's I, I fucking love it, dude. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it was rad. It was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, but in mm -hmm. the end, it was. Uh, you know, a lot a lot of this too was put together in a format like how's this going to translate live? Mm -hmm. And I just remember, you know, a lot of times where you get like super intricate and super technical, it just doesn't come across live, you know. And I saw this again more of, you know, not to keep going back to beer commercial, car commercial, and that kind of thing, but but so everybody would get it. No one would be sitting there going. I'm not sure what's happening. And, you know, part of it, and Ray, Ray delivered it without even thinking about it, but it can be said for all 11 songs, when that second chorus comes, you know what it is. Mm -hmm. you, you've heard it once, it's sticking with you, mm -hmm. and you're good. You, it, it's not that it's predictable, but it's like what a hit song should be. You know, mm -hmm. it's memorable, like Ray kept said in the beginning, and you hear it over and over, and you hear it over and over, you get stuck in your head, you know. And Whether you like it or not. <laughs> But exactly. we've all had those songs in our head that we can't stand. Absolutely. Get out, get out. I mean, dude, I fucking, I know Skid Row and Bon Jovi songs, you know, word for word. And yeah. I've never owned an album, you know, like, not that Skid Row is bad, actually, but, or, or Bon Jovi, but it's just not my thing. Mm -hmm. But you know, even that, I mean, just go to pop songs and things like that. It's the same. Yeah. But I like, I, I will say this, Gonzo, it's like, it was cool that I, I Viv and Jupe and Mark, uh, and Phil gave me the opportunity to do, like growing up, I I listened to the music that my mom listened to, which mm -hmm. was, I mean, it was all kind of the disco era, the soul 
era, um, like freaking Peaches and Herb, uh, Brothers Johnson, you know, uh, just stuff like this, even Casey and the Sunshine. Man. I grew up as a kid listening to Little River Band, everything, mm-hmm. you know, and I never had really that opportunity to to use that sort of influence or, or I don't know if it's even an influence with music. But with these guys, I was able to like, you know, just do whatever I wanted and it was fine. There, there would be no consequence. Obviously, everything's off the table. And, and it was and that was really cool for me. So I would have a lot of fun doing that. And Can you give I'm me a specific glad. example of that? There's a, well, there's the, I don't even know the names of the songs now. It's been so long since we've done it. Uh, the world beneath your feet is cold and dry. Like that is sort of like, it reminds me like maybe of an old stick song or something. But there was a line in one of the songs, and I think it's Runaway or something, that I, it was driving me crazy, the melody. I'm like, I know this melody. I know this melody. It's driving me freaking crazy. For days, I worried about it. And I started doing research, looking around like, but maybe, in, I know it's the 70s, it's a soul group, and I couldn't figure it out. Finally found it. It's a Peaches and Herb song. And it literally was, like, it's like three notes that like, um, I can't pull off the top of my head. But You know, there is one hard. melody that's been sticking out to me in that same way. And it, I'm going to laugh if we're talking about the exact same cut. Mm. Well, you know, all the metalheads know this, you know, they, every, every email that I ever get from a fan, they keep talking about the peaches and herb reference, <laughs> you know, but it's yeah. funny, Ray, because when you were, turning that, when you were turning that stuff in and, and it needs to be noted, what Ray turned in is basically what you have on the album. Mm-hmm. We never, no. I don't think Ray there, you know, we ever said, Hey man, uh, I don't dig this or I don't dig that. You know, it was it was what it was. Yeah, I was really surprised actually, Mark, that whatever I would send in, there was never, uh, you know, I, I don't dig this part, I don't dig that part. It was always like, well, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Maybe we should double it. It was kind of that thing more than anything. But, uh, and the cool thing about it, I don't know if anyone knows or cares, but uh not that this what I did were, were demos, but everything that I wrote and recorded and sent to these guys was what was used on the album. And I did that here in my little home studio. Everything was done, you know. Um, so for me, normally when I do an album, I do the demo, then I go to a studio for 10 days or whatever and work for 10 hours a day and, and track. And it was it's funny, Mark, you may even know this, uh, that a lot of times you lose you lose that that sort of magic you have on the demo you what you're doing is trying to recreate it and so there's certain notes there's certain uh, and you emoted a certain line that you just you can't fucking get back and it, it's never the same and so for me it was really awesome to use what i recorded primarily for the album, not having to go back and try to reproduce it. Because what I was going for is what is on the album. So mm. far, what it is. So you know, to I me, that, I, that's pretty rad. That was a first for me. Well, again, I think from my side, and when I'm listening to this, and, and again, <clears throat> seriously, I was sitting right in this chair, right in this studio, and when I hear this shit, I would like fall off my chair. I would, I would just be like, you know, this is great. You know, it's like, it, it, again, as a fan, I would sit back and go, it's exactly what we were talking about. But I think it comes down to also part of the magic with everybody else. It was like, you find the best people you can, you know, whether it's Ray, whether it's Philip Jube, Hugh Syme, you know, Chris Grosso doing the videos, whatever. And you let them do what they do. I, I gave Ray the music. I said, do, do whatever you do. I know you're, you know, this kind of music, you know, this gig, you know, it's nothing foreign to you. Just do what you want to do, man. And I think when I listen to it, as compared to a lot of things Ray's done in the past, not that this is loose, but this is kind of loose as far as he's just doing his thing, you know. And when I listen to this back, I get a feeling of four four man. What's that? Four four. Yeah, <clears throat> it works. It works. I know we threw. You know, a it's, you know what's happening next? Yeah. Well, that was. I'm doing a song way. right now for my solo album. It's a nine. The whole thing. Why? Yeah. <laughs> Why? I, I always ask it, myself. Why? Yeah. You know, it's actually well, really cool, but it took me it took me a couple of hours to like figure out a melody for this. But it's cool. 
Anyway, back to reality, Mark. Back to reality. But no, it was, <laughs> it, it's, you let them do what they're going to do. And there was like a freedom and a looseness. And, and I think once we got going and everybody was going, yeah, man, this is fucking great. I think a little of the apprehension kind of left your back and you didn't feel like, oh, shit, I'm getting judged under a microscope every two seconds. No, I am. No. Thought crossed my mind now and then, but I don't care. I was, I'm making music, man. That's what we do. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But I, know, I don't think anybody said anything ever about anything. I, I, no. I honestly don't remember, you know, yeah, four bars, eight bars, fade it, do this, do that. You know, that, that's not a big deal. But as far as... Oh, I yeah. Think, you, you notice, Gonzo, the fades brought back the fades on the album. Yeah, yeah. Some yeah. of them some of them were really, really rapid. <clears throat> it's, pretty, it's, it's pretty funny. After a while, I was like, you have too many fades? Because, I mean, that was like the 70s and the 80s where mm -hmm. music fade out. Absolutely. Absolutely, I remember. I it was pretty cool. You know, yeah. Kid, I like it. And at the end, you always have that little bit of extra going on, and you, you know, what's going? What's happening? What's happening? Oh, it's gone. Yep. I thought that was really cool. Yep. That, that was a nice touch, I think. A lot of the fades. So, fade out. Absolutely, absolutely. That was definitely done on purpose. And it was funny yep. because yesterday I was listening to, I think like an old Montrose album, and it was the same thing. Okay, basically the song's over, we're done. And you hear like the little guitar and you hear the little talking in the background, like he's he's singing a line, but it's fading. And you're going, what the fuck's this? Yeah. What's this? And it's gone. Always, always a little bit of something left in there somewhere. I, I like that. Absolutely. Line. Absolutely. Cool. You know, we also got kind of, when we we're putting the music together, not that we got bored coming up with endings, but I think if you have a bunch of cute endings on all your songs, it kind of gets, you got to have some kind of variety. And certain mm -hmm. songs just lend themselves to, you know, going. You know, <laughs> we haven't let you answer, uh, ask any questions, Gonzo, and it's already ten oh one. Sorry. Yeah, no, it, it's fine. I, I like we're already we only have five minutes left, but at the same time, you guys, I could listen to you guys talk all fucking day. <laughs> you know, we can like, talk for hours. I don't have to ask any questions. You guys are just talking, and it's fucking great. Well, ask something. I'm sure you have something that some. I mean, yeah, I do have a bunch of notes here. Uh, one of them is uh, Ray. Um, I, I hear a lot of callbacks to Fates in some of these lyrics. Uh, really? Are you are you trying to fuck with us? Not at all. <laughs> I mean, it's funny. Like when I write lyrics, it's it's for me that that's the hardest part of mm -hmm. writing lyrics. For one, not trying to repeat myself, but that happens whether you like it or not and um and, and again you know a lot of people what does what does this song mean what does it mean I, and i i hate explaining lyrics to people i shouldn't you know you, you don't no one ever asked you know robert plant what his lyrics meant it just was what it was you know not that i'm robert plant i'm not putting myself in this in his bubble at all but i just you know like i don't know for me the lyrics on this album were were just stuff off the top of my head you know true feelings whatever happens in the world make up your own story kind of thing but no there's no fates unless it was you know a happy what's the word um serendipitous i guess serendipitous now because like because uh sometimes uh there was a callback to a pleasant shade of gray there you there's nothing left to say somewhere in there we only say goodbye uh, gets a call back walls gets a call back i know it's not fates but i hear you know, I hear some like references here and there. Huh. Maybe yeah. it's subliminal. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. You, can't, you can't forget. You can't Back forget. Stuff, can't forget. Yeah. Separate ways is in there too. <laughs> oh, and uh, and borrowed time. I hear a little bit of engine in there. Yeah. Well, I mean, everyone's going to hear influences. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. there's 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 a, a song that people say sounds like outside looking in. Uh, it marks what the drums do in that drum part. And I heard it. My wife, she's like, sounds like outside looking in. Like, what? Are you serious? <laughs> and then somebody said, it on the, I guess it's trauma fire, is what it is. I saw okay. the, the comments. My wife sent me the picture of the comment. Like, Can you see this? See, they, they think the same thing. I don't, people are going to hear that because, you know, what are you going to do? People are going to hear that. But it has nothing to do with nothing. Yeah. Guys, I, I could talk to you guys all day. Uh, we're down to two minutes before the, the call gets terminated. Uh, Mark, you brought something up just a moment ago that I'm not going to let you get away with. And after that, I want you guys to pick a song for me to play after uh, after the interview ends and so that I can roll out with it. Uh, Mark, my question to you is, you said a moment ago, how's this going to work live? Is this going to happen live? 
Sure, hope so. Um, the problem that we're not, that's not a problem we're running into, but with the whole COVID thing, you've got 2022, all the bands for 2021 booked now. Mm-hmm. You know, I've done a lot of interviews with a lot of the bigger uh, hard rock magazines in Europe, Metal Hammer, Rock Hard and stuff like that. And they're already handing out invitations for festivals. Um, I think this would be amazing live. Um, it's just a, really a bitch now. You know, you hear about all these airport cancellations and gig cancellations and stuff. And it's tough. It's really tough. But it's being looked into. You know, we have to do it right. Obviously, we're not going to go, you know, in a van, you know, 105 degrees and play in front of 80 people. Nobody in this band really needs that experience. I think we've all done that. So, no, a- absolutely. It's just, <laughs> yeah, uh, too recently, actually, myself. But anyways, um, no, absolutely. You know, it's just a matter of getting, doing it the right, it just has to be done right, the right way. Kind of like the philosophy behind the whole album. Mm-hmm. You know, we didn't do, hey, go to our website and look at the pictures. You know, it was like full-blown packaging. Everything kind of done 70s and 80s style, you know. And if we're going to play, it has to be done right, you know. Uh, but I think it's important, very yeah. important, and, and, and I'd love to do it. That was kind of the whole point of getting this rolling, you know, and it all really depends too. The album comes out and stiffs and it's like the top, the lower top 10 album of the year, of like the most horrible album. Well, it's going to be a little tough to book a gig. Yeah, let's, let's see what happens. <laughs> all right. On that note, 10 seconds left. Pick a song, Ray. I don't know what songs. I don't know what to do. Uh, but, uh, uh, Two minutes to midnight. I already made. I don't know why. Oh, I, shut why. up, dude! <laughs> I don't know why it came into my head. Wait a minute. Were you talking about our song or someone's song? Your song. Oh, 